Okay, all right, everybody, I'm here with Jeff O'Toole, who's done part of the conversion here of this e Merc, you know? And if you look at the vehicle on the front, it's got this, this peace symbol, tread lightly, you know? So it's, it's a real sort of, real sort of switched on, environmentally conscious conversion, this one. But the, I guess that was some things that were done before Jeff got his paws on it. In fact, we were trying to cope with, uh, uh, cope with quite some difficulties here where we didn't know what the motor was doing, what its output was, but we will we'll get to that. But uh, Jeff, tell us a bit about this car, what its history is and how you became involved with the conversion. Well, this, this car has been around for probably 10 years by now, 10 years now. Um, it's gone through a few iterations in design. It's got basically a 36 kilowatt Thundersky battery pack, which is about 300 volts. Um, it has an Azure Dynamics AC24 motor in it. It did have an AC, an Azure Dynamics, oh, what are they? It's, uh, uh, I think I well, it had number. something that did something, eh? It, yeah. it had an Azure Dynamics controller in it, which died uh, about two years ago, and then we replaced it with a new fancy controller. So. The drive in it, the controller that's in it now is a Scott Drive. Scott Drive comes, from New Zealand, yeah. Comes from New Zealand. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty much done, it's been pretty faultless in its use. Um, and yeah, okay, it's got a, a Brucia charger in it. Uh, so it's a, like a high voltage charger, uh, three and a half kilowatts. Well, the yeah, charger runs at maximum 16 amps. Yeah, 16 amps, volts. yeah. So, with John's ingenuity, we've ended up putting an Arduino on it, so we can change the charge rate and we can do lots of other things with it. He's made all kinds of tricky bits work in the car, which had never worked previously. So um, yeah, it's all thanks to John. Okay, well, well, Jeff's done some interesting stuff on the on the on the clutch and so on, and we will get yeah. to that. But just to, to fill you in on the, some of the stuff that I was involved in it. Now this. Merck used to have a motor and the motor would spin it would give out a signal to the rest of the car and that signal would start up the steering so but mm. after the conversion there was no longer a motor there which meant that the steering didn't start when you first turned on the car which was a, a, a made life a bit difficult now if yeah. you drove it a bit forward or back the steering would then turn on and we figured aha that's because the rear wheels are moving and the car, meta metaphorically, the people who wrote the original program were thinking, well, if the motor's out and the wheels are turning, someone's probably pushing the car, so maybe we should turn on the steering. And a lot of the time, that's all right. You drive the car a little bit further, you get the steering, and then you do whatever you need to do. But obviously, if you are parking in one of those tight carping spaces in the inner west, you are stuffed, okay? So you really do want to get the steering going as soon as the car turns on. And one of the things I did with my Arduinos, I got an Arduino module that pretended it was the rear wheels. And when you first turn the car on, it sort of basically generates a signal like the car is moving. And you actually see it in the speedo when you first turn up, turn the car on. When you first turn the car on, the speedo's wiggling up and down. Now I actually did that thing of it wiggling up and down so the person driving wouldn't be too confused. Sort of, it's obvious the car's not actually driving, the, the, the Arduino module's doing that. But because it did that to start off with, you can actually start the car, sit there for 30 seconds or whatever, and the steering will start and you'll be able to use the steering. So that's one of the things that I did. Now the other thing is this Brusa charger, very, very good in some ways, but it also has its idiosyncrasies. The Brusa has an RS232 interface and a CAN bus interface. But if you want to get that J1772 handshake going, the one that will let you charge it from the chargers in shopping centres, you need to do the J1772 handshake. And you cannot tell the Brusa to do that via RS232. You've got to set up CAN bus and tell it to do. So that's why I had another CAN bus, I had another Arduino module that actually just spit out the signal to tell the Brusa, look, do the J1772 handshake. And what that meant was that prior to that, you just had to have a manual connection in the charging. But now you can actually charge it from, you know, your commercial chargers in the shopping centres, or even if you want to buy an EVSE, you can charge it using that. So it's now a lot more flexible. But the other cute thing is, if you look inside on the gear stick, it's sort of manual, but there's a push button there. So this is a semi, uh, it's sort of manual, but it's got a push button clutch. Yep. And that's one of the things that Jeff has done. So Jeff, tell us a bit more about the way you've implemented this clutch. Yeah, so originally this car was an automatic automatic car. So there was no gear, but there was just an automatic gearbox in it. Two pedals, no clutch pedal. Um, now the original owner put a manual gearbox into the car um, and he would basically just change 
without the clutch up and down, which in most cars works sometimes. <laughs> um, in this car, it really didn't like being changed without the clutch. Anyway, uh, originally I, when, I, when I did the conversion or did the adapters for the motor and the controller and uh, or the gearbox, uh, I actually put the clutch. There's actually, there was actually a clutch put in the car. Um, so I ended up, and then when I got it again, it actually had the clutch cylinder and everything in the car. So I actually made an assembly that basically you push the button and it disengages the clutch. And then you can change gears successfully now. Whereas previously, it, it was okay to start with, but it got worse, progressively worse, I suppose, until it was definitely, we had to do that. So now, yeah, you push the button, there's a little light on the dashboard, says the clutch is disengaged, change gears, push the button again, and then it, um, it, it re-engages the clutch and off you keep going. So, pretty cool, a little bit different, never done it before. Uh, it works, uh, it, it works, it does actually work. Um, yeah, what other interesting things? I, I think there, there was some, some the, uh, switches you had to do with charging such that when you open yeah. the port it enables the charging. So there's a few little doodads you did to assist with charging there. Yeah, so yeah, on the charge door we had a switch and it, it had a normally open, normally closed position. So if the, the charge door was open it would let you charge, but you had to actually close the door properly, properly being the, the correct term, and then it would let you drive the car. And if the door wasn't closed you couldn't get, you can't go anywhere. So it kind of stops, like if you, you've got the lead still plugged in and you try and drive off, it won't go anywhere. But a lot of yeah. regular cars, they, they refuse yeah. to drive off if you've got yeah. the, the charger yeah. plugged Which in. Is pretty normal. And, and you've sort of done this implicitly yeah. here. And, and as it's a Mercedes, it does have air conditioning. So, which unfortunately, you know, John I didn't drove get it, it for a good number of months without air conditioning, yeah. so that so, wasn't yeah. the most pleasant so it has, car to drive, but never mind. Yeah. It has an electric air conditioning compressor, which is mounted underneath the body. A condenser, it little works like a normal system, except there's no belts. And um, you basically just push the button on the dashboard and, and it gets and cold. Jeff, I seem to remember you were actually installing a new compressor or something in it at one stage. Was that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah like yeah. it's got a new one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's underneath the driver's seat. Okay. Well, outside of the car. And, and <laughs> another thing, when I was first driving it, uh, the motor controller was a bit idiosyncratic. If you started it too suddenly, you would actually get this car kangaroo hopping. And normally you just think of it's petrol cars with manual transmission, it's a kangaroo hop. But this one, even though it's an electric car with an electric speed controller, it would actually kangaroo hop. And, you know, my current theory is that when you first engage the, uh, the, the motor, the resistance is so low that your inrush current is so big that then the motor controller says, oops, too much current, and then cuts out. So you get this kangaroo hopping. And I think one of the things we did, we did actually adjust the parameters in the motor controller so that when you first start up, it doesn't put on so much current and it's less chance of kangaroo yeah. hopping. But obviously over time you get a bit skilled about just giving just the right amount so that it doesn't go, go yeah. troppo. But we yeah. certainly made some adjustments to the settings on the motor controller along the yeah. way as well. And you should also I suppose, say that it has got regen braking as well. Yeah. So basically, yeah, you know, the accelerator pedal is, you know, 20% regen and 80% throttle. So you get back to the 20%, take your foot off, the car just slows down nicely. Mm. And really, don't really need to use the brake pedal much at all. Yeah, well, I do remember there were times when you're cruising down a, a steep hill, I mean, on the way to Gosford yeah. or whatever, and then you would up the, yeah, that's up, right. yeah. up, up the regen braking and make better use of the regen braking. But if you have the regen braking at full, the, the car is a bit jerky in its motion. But certainly yeah. when yeah. you're rolling down a steep hill, you manually turn the regen up and it sort of all works out reasonably well. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's uh, it's certainly a car with its idiosyncrasies, and I guess I learnt, learnt the hard lesson. So, its current owner hopefully has <laughs> fewer issues to deal with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 